StarCraft. Today I have a one versus one matchup to share with you guys. I picked it because it is starring the best Zerg player in the world. I am Nest Nesty is a Korean pro who won GSL Season 2. He is pretty much accepted as the best Zerg player worldwide. God, I can't say enough great things about Nesty. I almost made a Nesty tribute video uh, because of his performance in the round of four at the current GSL. Um, I mean, he's going to be competing in the GSL championships this weekend going up against OGS Inca, a Protoss player, and um, God, he's just so good. He's the best Zerg player in the world, you know, enough said. Got to talk about the Protoss player as well. Although his ID is coming up here as Team We Hot, um, he's part of the We Clan, and I believe his name is Love, and uh, th there might be a couple initials after Love, but uh, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to call him Love. He's a member of Team We which is a Chinese clan. I'm not as familiar with the Chinese scene as I am, you know, with the Korean pro gamers or the North American scene, but uh, this is a game off that server. This is a tournament matchup, and uh, as such, it should be really exciting. It should be, you know, tense. Both of these players really want this victory. This is a, a best of three series, and not surprising to me, Nesty has actually put up his spawning pool first well he got his extractor and then the pool but definitely pool before hatchery he didn't want to fast expand uh, versus his protoss opponent he didn't want to fast expand on this map this is not the same sorry what I, what I want to say is that this is the latter version of shattered temple I haven't actually mentioned that this is shattered temple but of course it is um, this is the latter version some tournament versions that they used at like MLG or GSL actually prevent this type of spawning location um, of course, if we're up at Nesty's base, you can go down the ramp, um, out towards the middle of the map, and close by foot, I mean, these guys, just a stone's throw away walking distance, and these spawns are actually disabled on, on lots of tournament versions of this map, but it's not the case today. It makes it a little bit more risky for the Zerg player. It definitely is going to um, prevent the Nesty from going, you know, any kind of hatchery first build. It's just far too risky, especially given the chrono boost we're seeing going down on the Zealot here. Just one assimilator up. At the top of the ramp, we have a cybernetics core along with a second gateway. So this initial Zealot is just going to head uh, over to Nesty's base. We have plenty of scouting done by both players. You know, no one really in the dark at this point. Nesty doesn't know about the second gateway, but he will shortly as he is heading to the top of the ramp with some Zerglings. Of course, Zergling speed not complete just yet, but it is on the way. And uh, just one harvester on the extractor. It's important to you know notice these little intricacies. You know, using three uh, drones just to get a hundred gas for metabolic boost, and then taking two of the drones off. Just a little tweak in the build of Nesty as the hatchery now halfway complete. Zelnaga Tower is gonna you know be occupied by this Zergling. Very nice map control by Nesty. He's got, you know, three lings at the front choke point here. He's got the Zelnaga. He's got even an Overlord. Oh, and I'm actually surprised that uh, the Protoss player can spot this Overlord. I mean, as we can see here... Oh, hello, phone. We can see here, clearly the Overlord is on the high ground. Uh, you, as you can see with the little line, and well, it's blocked by the tree. I really want to make this point, though. I'm even going to shift the camera angle. There it is. Right there. It's on the high ground, but... The Protoss player, at least a moment ago, he could still see the Overlord, but the uh, the Overlord's gone now. Anyway, maybe I shouldn't focus too heavily on that, but kind of threw me off. Um, just sort of a little a little bug with the high ground mechanic. Two sentries out and uh, one zealot, a third sentry he uh, joining them as well. So lots of energy for force fields. It's going to make it very difficult for. Even even Zerglings with speed to get the surround that they need. Hallucination on the way. Only 80 seconds to build Hallucination. That was buffed in, in one of the recent patches. Two gases now. And uh, three drones mining uh, the one extractor in the Zerg base. These four links are definitely not going to want to engage this. One pylon going down. I wouldn't be surprised to see some... Uh, structures to wall off this natural base. It really does make it much easier to defend your, your Protoss expansion. Roach Warren is completed. The natural uh, hatchery is completed as well. A second queen is out. St 
still just lots of sentries. Two more gateways on the way on the low ground here, as I mentioned before. A hallucinated phoenix. Probably the most popular use of the hallucination spell. I'm going to spot those four roaches before they actually make it to the uh, Protoss base. And because of those four roaches, we have you know slightly repositioning his army, putting down another pile on here. Force fields going down as well, but... Uh, I mean, Roaches can still get pot shots off on the gateways. Uh, this Stalker may benefit, yeah, from heading to the high ground here, just on the ledge. Uh, there's not going to be any spotting for the Zerg player, so it's actually going to be a little bit difficult for the Roaches to pressure down in, in this lower area near the ramp, because they are going to be eating Stalker fire. Still lots of energy on these sentries, plenty of force fields, still just one Stalker, sorry, one Zealot. Um, but a couple Stalkers on the low ground. Some nice force fields there. He's going to want to move back those sentries. He's trapped a few uh, roaches. Going to take those out, really uh, dropping Nesty's numbers. But wow, Nesty is just producing nothing but attacking units. Nesty really wants to end this game shortly. He has a small supply lead. And he's just going to continue to pressure with these roaches. Some nice force fields as well, splitting up the roach count. And um, I mean... Protoss, the Protoss player, Love here, is, is looking to be in a pretty good position. He's saturating his natural base on the unit counting station. We can see there's a worker advantage as well going to the Protoss player. He's up by five workers right now, and that's definitely not where you want to be as Nesty, but we can see six more drones on the way. So Nesty sort of gives up on this pressure. He realizes it's a little bit too hard to push into such a you know, a walled off area against a Protoss player with this many force fields available. That Overlord escapes to the high ground. Uh, forge on the way. I believe he moved that Forge. He had it over here a moment ago. He cancelled it and moved it in. And, uh, oh, he even had a couple of camping lings. Very sneaky. There's another Zergling up here that Love does not know about. Nest T still just, you know, guarding that choke point. Map control still going to the Zerg player. And finally, at long last, Lair Tech on the way. I think that Nesty was happy to delay Lair Tech. He wasn't too concerned, just because he's, he's very aware at how many gateways have gone down and, you know, the forge and, of course, uh, the expansion. He wasn't worried about, uh, you know, Dark Templar, for example. It wouldn't be feasible in this situation, so he didn't need an Overseer and didn't need Lair Tech that quickly. I'm sure he's going to get Roach Speed as soon as his Lair tech is done he's getting an evo chamber as well so might try to line up a, a timing window with roach speed and with uh, plus one uh, missile attack getting a spine in position as well he's actually worried that the protoss player is going to move out another gateway here and at this point this is a complete wall off there's not going to be an getting any zerg units through there one photon cannon defending so no crazy burrow tactics are going to work in this situation. But here we go. This is a pretty good surround by Nesty getting the speed link flank behind. But some nice force fields keep the roaches at bay. A forward spine crawler, a proxy pylon, and continued creep spread from our Zerg player. This is going to be a pretty tough engagement. It's way too close to call. Supply count dead even at 97. And this next engagement is really going to be make it or break it for these players. Hydralis Den on the way. Of course, Hydra is very useful against virtually all gateway units. It's almost a shame that Nesty did not, you know, get the Hydra Den sooner. But, I mean, that being said, his Lair Tech has only been up very briefly. So he's not going to get Roach Speed or anything. He's just going to go for that. Uh, he's just going to go for Hydras. He's getting seven Hydras out now. And with decent creep spread, those Hydras will be able to get into position quite quickly. Hydra's great against Immortals. And it's probably a good thing for Nesty that, um, that Love is at least getting some Immortals. Only one out uh, so far. And let's take a look at the upgrades. Plus one attack and plus one armor is, is about halfway complete for the Protoss player. And when you have uh, an upgrade advantage versus Zerg as Protoss, I mean, you're often in a good position. Excellent. Oh my god, those are incredible force fields. Did you see how they blocked off the speedlings there? That is just incredible. I'm so impressed. These speedlings coming in very late. More stalkers are getting warped in. These speedlings are doing a ton of damage now. Hydras doing a lot of damage. 13 more hydras on the way, and range is completing. I think that's going to be it for love. It's just too many hydras hatching at once. But that is an excellent force field on the ramp. It's going to make it very difficult for the hydras to get shots in. 
the Protoss army is not going to want to get too close to this ledge. And, oh, he doesn't have any more energy. He doesn't have any more sentries. I'm not sure. I'm actually still so on the fence. I don't know who's going to win this. There are just so many, uh, so many Hydras hatching. Even though there's been a supply advantage for the Protoss player for uh, basically this whole engagement, there's just so many Hydras. But these Stalkers, you know what it comes down to? The upgrades. 1-0 for Hydras. 1-1 one, one for Stalkers, and along with these proxy pylons, constantly warping in reinforcements it just makes it uh, a little bit too difficult for Nesty here, and it does look like Nesty is going to lose this game. I don't think he's going to have enough reinforcements. He is. I'm surprised that Love is actually continuing to make uh, Immortals. I mean... Immortals are pretty useless against Hydras, but um, it doesn't even matter. Just so many 1-1 one, one upgraded Stalkers, you know, constantly warping them in off of... He's going 6 Gate and 1 Robo, correct? Absolutely. Um, yeah, and it's just too much. Really broke the back of Nesty. Nesty found himself really far behind when his initial pressure with those roaches at the front door really weren't able to do anything just because there were so many sentries out and the wall off uh, prevented the roaches from being effective. Love got his natural expansion up no problem, saturated it, got a booming economy, and just set up a, a deadly 1-1 timing attack. So that was the game. I was excited to bring it to you guys. It was a really cool match.